December 17, 2010, a young Tunisian man, Mohamed Bouazizi, supporting his family by selling fruit from his cart, set fire to himself to protest against local officials who confiscated his merchandise. He immediately became the symbol of injustice on the internet in Tunisia. And this gave birth to a movement of protests, protests against employment, against political repression, against poverty, and of course, Ben Ali's regime. And of course, this became um, 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 nymph, or this influenced later on other countries in the region and became what we call the Arab Spring. Now, the internet has served for many populations and minorities as a platform, a platform to express themselves and a platform to transmit their images to the whole world. It has become the unique source of information in troubled times. So it can be really very effective. So maybe some of the examples of the use of the internet is that we can use it to be informed about uh, what happens in the world, abuses, of course. It can be used to know more about um, minorities, what happens to minorities. It can be used as a very effective tool to organize ourselves and rebel. It is a way to say no. It is a way to mobilize people. It is also a way of um, holding signs. It is also used to raise awareness on violence against women and children. In 2019, in Tunisia, a young Tunisian woman, uh, girl, student, um, posted photos, shared photos on social media, showing a man performing a sexual action or act from his car, he was inside his car, but outside the high school. And these photos were shared, testimonies uh, of sexual harassment also by young girls in Tunisia with the hashtag Enazeda, which means in Tunisian Arabic, me too. It appears that this man was a newly elected member of parliament. So these, this, these are the ways we can use the internet to promote and exercise our human rights. But excesses accompanying the digital revolution are numerous. Excessive surveillance, manipulation of votes, it can be about dissemination of uh, hate speech. Um, it can be the use of terrorist, uh, of, uh, the use of the internet by terrorist organizations, etc., etc. The question is how to protect our human rights, being part or um, um, being surrounded by artificial intelligence and big data without standing in the way of technological progress. Actually, there is a concept that can be extremely useful here. It is both a fundamental right that we seek to protect, but it is also a tool for the proper use of new technologies, the right to privacy and to protect our personal data. In 2015, I started learning data protection tools and principles. For seven years, I have been providing 
trainings on this subject to identify risks and help people uh, manage them. I ended up actually um, using 50% of my time or dedicating 50% of my time to this topic. Um, people kept asking me questions. The most important questions that I have been asked to answer to, or at least try to answer to, uh, were the following. People asked me, isn't this going to slow down our processes and our work and the technological developments? How could legislations stay up to date? Data protection legislations, how could they stay up to date within this environment of technological progress? And my favorite one, how could we understand all these complicated, sophisticated privacy policies that we have to approve and accept on a daily basis? My answer is the following. If privacy is or aims at preventing from uh, or preventing any outside um, uh, intervention in our private life, Data protection offers tools, mechanisms, and strategies to be used to protect our data. So we are invited to act. This is a dynamic approach. We are invited to be actors as opposed to subjects. And here are a few suggestions. One. Be aware of what is at stake. Two, require clear, simple, and understandable information so that we are able to give our clear and informed consent each time our data is processed. Three, require to be offered a variety of options before our data is processed. Edward Snowden once said, if you do not care about um, your privacy rights or rights to privacy because you have nothing to hide, it is exactly the same thing as saying that you do not care about your freedom of speech because you have nothing to say or freedom of press because you have nothing to write. It is selfish. So I invite each one of you to stand up for your rights without forgetting to stand up for your fundamental right to privacy. Thank you. <laughs>